What will UEFA do next, Gav, regarding these clubs coming back? Is there any thought of punishment, banning them, points deduction, those sort of things? No, I don't think so. And look, I can tell you what I hope UEFA do, which is bring them back and then get together and come up with some sort of, of system of governance um, that works, that works for these clubs. Where the, like, one point that these clubs, and not, not all of them, because, you know, the reality of Chelsea and Manchester City, for example, is very different from the reality of, of Spurs, uh, who've got, uh, Real Madrid, who've got stadium debt, Barcelona, Juventus. You know, they're all, they're all in different situations. But they do highlight, I, they do have a valid point in the fact that they bore the brunt of the losses because of the pandemic. They bore most of the upside uh, uh, on the way up when, when revenues in European football doubled in the last 10 years. Um, but they also felt most of the damage at the end. And you can say, oh, but you're responsible. Why are you buying Ronaldo for $100 million, Eden Hazard for, 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 for $100 million, whatever? All of that is true. But the point is, they're the ones who, who drove the game to this point. So the idea is, how do we educate fans? How do we educate the reality of the game? Which is, you know what? If you overspent and then you took a big hit, you have to cut costs. You can't just sit there and say, oh, let me go and create this other competition where I get more <laughs> money and nobody else can come in, and that way I remove all entrepreneurial risk. It's called risk for a reason. If you take a hit in your business, you have to cut costs. And it's not impossible to do. In, in football, a quarter of your employees, uh, a quarter to a third of your employees, uh, their contracts expire at the end of every season. Don't renew them. Replace them with cheaper workers. That... That's business. That's what these people who call themselves free market business people, that this is what they do. They don't go and form cartels because it suits them. And I think that's the message that has to go to them. At the same time, they will need support. All of football needs support. Um, but, but, but that's not the right way to do it. And please, don't tell me it's about entrepreneurship, it's about business, may the best product win. This has nothing to do with it. As Craig said before, this is built on 100 years of history. This is built on an entirely different model. You can't simply go and rip it up and try to strong arm not just UEFA, but also other clubs into, into joining your group simply because you don't want to deal with a year or two of cost-cutting, of, 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 of perhaps you know not competing. You know, the interesting thing for me is, is whether UEFA used this, and maybe the boys can answer it if, if Gab's internet ever gets back up to speed, uh, is whether the UEFA will use this, I don't know, I'm just imagining, as a sledgehammer to quell the voices of these <clears throat> 12 in the room. But, I, don't uh, know, I don't know if what the guys think, if that's the case, but, but, but Sefran was so strong in it and his statement yeah. and his condemnation that when they do get to the negotiating table around all things money and structure is, well, Seferin and his cronies, and look, UEFA and FIFA and all these organisations are far from perfect. We understand that, that change needs to happen, structure needs to change, and the way the money siphons down and flows down to all the other teams needs to improve. But when it comes to the hard, in fact, negotiating, will he slap these teams down at the negotiating table after their failure mm. to go away and try and stick two fingers up to UEFA. That, that is going to be... I'd love to be in the room when, when they sit down to have these talks. When you've got the likes of Bayern and other, some of these other big clubs, PSG, who backed, basically backed UEFA and said, we're staying with you. Yeah. But, but I... I, 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 I I, that is, 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 is a very good question because uh, uh, UEFA... Uh, uh, have the last years been very good friendly with these big clubs and uh, let's not forget that the, uh, the the reform of champions league on monday there is also places available for for people who have a good reputation or clubs have a good rep rep uh, rep reputation in uh, on, of, of trophies so they come in as a as a, a free uh, a team in there and i think that chef uh, Seferin and and uefa got to do that. I doubt they will do that. I, I think that we will come quickly uh, back mm. to normal business. Uh, and I also think, look at PSG now, look at Bayern Munich, they've strengthened their position at, uh, at UEFA. And I'm, 
I'm not sure that we can go all the way the other way that the the, the teams who are not in those uh, 12 uh, um, bracket of, of clubs, that they are the bad ones and that the rest are the good ones. I hope you're right, Craig. I hopefully that we can use this for good governance. Hopefully we can find models for that. But I think that the main thing that we've got to have a look at is that the ownership of the clubs. Because the system can be made, we can make, make tournaments, we can be, make Champions Leagues. But what anyone can go in and buy a Premier League club, I'm, I'm not even starting in Newcastle, what's going on there at the moment. But anyone can go in there and, and buy a Premier League club. I think that's where it starts. Uh, and what you, what you said, Craig, nobody had said anything. And Gab said it. Perez at least he went out and said some nonsense. The other ones haven't even dared to go out and say they're nonsense. So I think we should start with the ownership and the model of owning football clubs because we have to define what it does it mean to own a football club. Well, these people are tone deaf. I mean, you've got Joe, you've got Joe Glazer out today, and I know you're talking about this with Augie. You've got Joe Glazer out today eulogising about the job, the great job that Ed Woodward has done. I mean, I mean, financially, I, I, I'll, I'll bow to the superior knowledge of these people, right? Mm -hmm. If it's all about the box, but don't tell me and the fans of Man United about what they've seen and witnessed in general on the football field, that everything's been brilliant. So th these people are... Read the room. Yeah. And Read the room. They are tone deaf. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.